Good morning, Brenton Begley. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, man. I'm doing great. I'm Greg McIntyre with McIntyre Elder Law, helping seniors protect their assets and legacies. And really, I feel like right now we're helping people, in addition to seniors, protect their assets, their rights, their legacies, uh, the Constitution, the country, <laughs> um, from you know what we fear is just – well, we don't know. We fear the virus. We fear everything. What do we fear? We're going to talk about today. How does this shutdown of the country affect your estate and affect your rights? How does the shutdown of the country affect your, your estate and your rights? I mean, I'm sure I, I guarantee you people are checking their 401ks and checking their IRAs. And they're also they're fearful of that. They're worried about the virus. They're worried about the businesses they run. They're worried about their jobs, if they're going to be there. They're worried about a total transformation of the country and having something that's unrecognizable because we're shut down for years. I mean, where is this thing going to lead? And it's become a political football. Brenton, what do you think about people's fears? Are they well-founded? I mean, are they legitimate? Um, I don't know. What are people fearing right now? What's going on? Yeah, you know, I think there's some obvious legitimate fear, especially for those who are the more vulnerable among us, right? So if you're susceptible to um, some type of um, illness or, or have pre-existing conditions, some type of um, breathing issues or just up there in age, whatever it is, I mean, your fears are well-founded and it's smart to practice social distancing and it's smart to um, just try to take any precaution you can um, to not catch the virus. However, fear is a funny thing and people react to it in many different ways. And I think our nation as a whole is gripped by fear right now. And that causes a ripple effect. You know, I mean, never in my life did I imagine that we would be in the situation that we are now. Um, you know, I know this is a novel virus and probably hasn't acted uh, quite like anything we've ever seen. But at the same time, our reaction is not like anything we've ever seen. Man, the economy shut down. We have been completely shut down as a country. And, you know, that leads into all kind of thoughts and discussions, especially from a lawyer's perspective. Um, I want to put out there that we certainly care about the vulnerable from a virus, whether it be the flu the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, the COVID-19, whether it be SARS, H1N1, whether it be anything, I don't want people to suffer. I don't want people to have disease. I don't want people to die. Um, so let's just put that out there. But we've also shut down an entire country as a reaction to what we thought might happen or what we were told by the experts that might happen, which right. hasn't happened. Which does two main things. You know, if you shut down an economy and you have a stay at home order, there's two main things that happen. So you have economic results and then you have the, you know, the effect on individual rights. And, um, you know, the economic results are obviously bad. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but things shutting down causes the economy to react badly, poorly, and um, you know unemployment. When you shut down the economy, when you shut down the economy, it doesn't bode well for the economy. It doesn't boost the economy. <laughs> it does not. Even no. if even the quote unquote stimulus um, checks, I doubt will. And let's talk about that. what is really the stimulus. Man, the stimulus is, is, is your tax dollars. <laughs> Come back to you. That's right. It's really the amount of your tax dollars. It's really the redistribution of wealth. It is. It's really what it is. It is a socialist type of thing. Yeah, social redistribution of wealth. Absolutely. Sure. And a lot of people wonder where this money comes from. And, you know, I mean, it's where any money comes from in a non- That's a tough question, though. That's a tough question. Yeah. Right. Yeah, really, thin air, right? We we print this this money because yeah, the economy runs off the the cycle of currency through it, um, and so all this is is just more currency being printed. You know, I mean, 
it, it, it'll it'll raise inflation and in the value of the dollar. Um, you know, but hey, you know, apparently people smarter than us have uh, determined that that outcome is more beneficial than. than I really take uh, issue with the fact with, with with in question whether whether uh, whether they're smarter than us. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if you can detect the sarcasm in my voice when I said that, but you know, yeah, yeah. these these um, what what we're doing now is is reactionary. Um, and you know, just, just a quick reaction to something that we don't really know a lot about. And, um, you know, we shut down the economy and that was quick reaction. And then we decided to print a bunch of money, a couple trillion dollars, throw it into the economy, see what happens. And that was a quick reaction too. None of it seems to be well thought out. Here's a question. Do things usually turn out better? when you are reactive, when you are simply reactive, or when you're more contemplative, thoughtful, and proactive. This is a loaded question, by the way. I'm gonna set this one up. <laughs> <laughs> and you think about the proper response, and you think about the proper course of action. You know. Which way is better? Obviously, the contemplative way, that's something that we talk about with our clients all the time. You know, do you, do you want to wait, wait till the last minute, wait till the last minute, you can do that too. Do you <laughs> want to wait till the last minute to have your estate plan in place where you, if you might be in a crisis, you're scrambling to get things together. Maybe someone's not confident to sign. Maybe we have a protected property, um, things like that, where you can kind of get into a mess um, or do you think it's better to have things in place beforehand so that if a crisis does happen, you can be protected and have, you know, options going forward. And that's, that's contemplative. That's having, that's being prepared, but not only being prepared, but having the ability to plan ahead rather than just react based on the facts you have at that moment. Because if you, if you react based on what's happening in the present, you're never going to have, uh, as good of a result as if you were to be able to plan um, and project future events. Yeah, I mean, you know, there has been a total reaction. And then, and then, you know, how do you get to a thoughtful, contemplative solution if the conversation is shut down when you try to start a conversation yeah. about a reasonable response? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that what we're seeing right now is is kind of difficult um, for people like me and you ha who have concerns, not only about what's happening economically, not only as small business owners, but also um, as attorneys who have had it drilled into us, you know, and I, I'm, I'm this way naturally. Um, but I and I know you are, too, but we've had it drilled into us as well as be vigilant and protect your rights. And and if you can't have a conversation about whether something that's happening right now is affecting your rights, then, I mean, that's a really difficult situation to put anyone in, especially in a democratic society. Um, and that's the thing, you know, I mean, the question, and I never thought I'd have to honestly ask this question, but, you know, the question I would pose to you is, you know, the economic component to this is obvious. People obviously don't like the fact that it's hurting their bank accounts. But what about what about rights? Should should we care about what's happening to our rights right now? Well, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I really don't care right now. Just keep me safe. It's the job of the government to keep me safe. It's the job of the government to make me stay home. It's the job of the government to protect me. I don't think that's in any way the full job of the government. And I would question whether simply shutting down the economy and not coming up with a reasonable approach is a job that's well carried out by the government. Or if giving up your hard fought constitutional rights is something that you should do, period, or that easily. Right. Now, let's 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 put it another way. Instead of a yeah. virus coming in 
if this was an invading country coming in, would right. we say, hey, it's okay. Come on in, invading country. Shut us down, and we're just going to stay home, and you can take away our rights. Exactly. I don't think we would give those up that easily. Oh, no, absolutely not. And, you know, I think, I think it's important that we explain kind of what we mean about taking away rights. Because I don't think people actually realize what's what's happening right now. Um, you know, anytime you have something like martial law, um, declaration of a national emergency or, or state of emergency, you have a suspension of people's rights. That's that's what that's for. The ability to declare that type of so that you can do things. Um, so that the government can do things, whether it's local government or federal, that is swift, decisive, expedient, and efficient, um, but may also infringe upon someone's constitutional rights. So one of those things is something like telling people to stay at home. Um, or how about telling someone they can't go to church? Exactly. So when you tell someone they have to stay at home unless they're essential, then and they can't congregate then so they can't that, assemble freedom of assembly that's right that has a lot of you know ancillary effects and what that actually does is it affects your first amendment rights freedom of religion freedom of speech freedom of assembly things like that even even i would go so far as to say privacy rights with you know the fact that police have the ability to to stop and question people if if they are wondering if search, they're search and seizure yes yeah, search and seizure search and, yeah exactly yeah fourth amendment search and seizure that's right. right and then and then so so can can they stop you because you're driving and you're not at home right now i think that is arguably a reason that could be used as a pretext for a stop that's right yeah enough probable cause to pull someone over just the you know the very question as to whether or not they're essential individual and should be home is enough probable cause for someone to pull someone over or a cop to pull someone over and then you know after someone's been pulled over legally right lawful stop, i've got another question for you what about me. what if somebody's seen going into your house coming over to your house yeah. what if there's too many what if there's too many cars in the carport that that aren't normally there right what if your neighbors call in and say, hey, you know, we think that there's a few people over there. Does that give the, the police the right to come in your home? Yeah, it's just a big deal, man. You cross that threshold and and there's no telling what type of where the search can go from there. So we've instantly gone back to a to a position where just like in the before the revolution, mm -hmm. you know, the English army, the soldiers could come in and ransack your house and search and whatever and you couldn't have weapons or whatever right yeah you come, in, you come to a situation where arguably you know they could come into your they could stop your car or come into your house yeah and search your home and arrest you yeah it's it's that's where we're at that's where we're at right now absolutely. And that me very much oh absolutely and and you know I mean, the the rights that we're talking about are not just things that are. Yeah, I mean, we fought and died for these rights. We have as, Americans as, have, as have Americans, fought and yeah. died for these rights, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, not since not only since the inception of our of our country. I mean, that's really what our United States and our Constitution is based off of. It's built on the you know bodies of young men who believed in having rights that won't be suspended. But it's also, you know, been protected by young men and women over the years who have fought for our country and our way of life. And, you know, my concern here is uh, it's all well and good if you trust the government enough to suspend your rights and give them right back. But we're setting a what date. What does history tell us? What does history tell us about trusting our government with too much power? Why, why was our country set up this way to begin with? It was to prevent this type of thing. A absolutely. I mean, our country was set up in a certain way to prevent tyranny. And okay. tyranny is simply overreached by a governing body. And that's what we have here. I mean, we have 
overreached by the government infringing upon our rights. And the thing is, is that history tells us that when rights are suspended, they're usually not given back in the same nature. Because what's happening here is we're setting a precedent, a precedent that says not only can the government suspend rights in the situation similar to this in the future, but they probably will be encouraged to do so by a, um, a campaign, it seems like, from both the media and um, certain individuals who, who seem to want to see those rights be suspended. And I'm not sure why that is. Me neither. I mean, I, I mean, some of the people that are campaigning, some people that are campaigning to suspend the rights, um, mm -hmm. I would think are the, the main people you would think would want to give people individual liberties and freedoms. Right. While also protecting people who are vulnerable from a, a communicable disease but also protecting individual liberties and freedom. Um, I don't think this is a partisan issue. I think this is a human rights issue. Yeah, and, and the weird thing is, I mean, that's very right. It's a human rights issue. And the weird thing is, is people are trying to pigeonhole it into a partisan issue somehow. So and to your point, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, everybody's hijacking this thing, right? And it's yeah. become so political. So, so to your point, um, when the government takes away rights, things go a little wonky and they don't give them back in the same way. The last time that something huge and major and then and happened and there was a reaction, what was it? 9-11, uh, let's say 9-11, right? Right, yeah, very good point. Yeah, and, 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 and you and I talked about that, about the FISA courts being implemented, right? So there yeah. were FISA court, courts implemented, which are secret courts, not public courts, secret courts, where you have to have probable cause to uh, to get warrants to listen to your phone calls, to to um, you know to surveil you, to follow you, to do certain things, right? And those right. are FISA warrants, and right. we've seen an abuse of FISA warrants in recent years, right? On a presidential candidate, regardless of your political affiliation, that should really concern you. That that's how politics can be run today, and that's how a FISA court can be misused, because right. it can be misused by either side, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know what the we're specifically talking about too, the Patriot Act that came in the in the play after 9/11. Sure. And um, the start of the the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, um, you know, and what that did was it it harmed. Uh, people's privacy rights in more ways than just the FISA court. Um, because, you know, what we did is extend the capability of surveillance. Um, but the FISA court was basically, um, you know, back, um, allowing the government to back into uh, whatever they found uh, with an unlawful search. So what happens is, you know, they have this technology like the NSA has this technology to find things, um, you know, and, 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 you know, by looking on your computer, running your metadata, whatever it is. And then the FISA courts allow them to get a warrant, not based off of something they found lawfully to do a, something a, that is already fruit of the poisonous tree. That's they right. They already know, right. they already know yeah. what they're going to find when they, when they so do they've it. They've already and, violated your constitutional rights. That's right. The courts allow them to try to wash it and make it clean. Yeah. And for those who don't, who don't, who aren't attorneys, it's just like a police officer breaking into your house at night and finding something illegal in your house. Going or that they think is illegal. We're not saying that they're yeah, going to argue, illegal. That they right. argue is illegal or that benefits them or, or some right. political party or anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, going to a magistrate and getting a warrant and then going right back in the house and then taking that evidence. And, oh, we found it. It's right here. Yeah. 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 yeah and we want to encourage that because that would be a no, no. That would be bad for our people as a whole right. to live in a society that runs that way. That's right. What, and that's what Britain's talking about. Britain, that's what you're talking about when you say, you know, when we overreact and we're willing to give up our rights and freedoms, that's the, the the bad situations we end up with. Yeah, because I mean, there was a you know 
we we reacted to 9-11 in that way because we wanted to make sure we could find terrorist cells, right? We, we could use our technology, tap people's phones and, and um, you know, look at people's computers, things like that, to find out if there was terrorist activity um, going on and, um, you know, preemptively stop any type of terrorist activity. And that sounds it like well. a noble goal. And that's yeah, my road to hell is paved with, with good intentions. That's right. And it, it sounds uh, almost as good as let's shut down the economy to keep, you know, to, and, and tell people to stay home to keep people from getting the virus. And man, that sounds like a noble goal too. Breaking but, in breaking into drug dealers' houses sounds like a noble goal too. Yeah. However, to get evidence. However, what if you're not a drug dealer? Or what if there's a mistake? Or what if just somebody doesn't like you and they reported you were a drug dealer? You're right. not going to like it very much when people break into your house. Right. Exactly. So, you know. What what if your neighbor doesn't like you now and reports you for having too many people over at your house? Too many people over at the house. And, and, and I mean, can the police come in? So you want to yeah. be careful of your rights there because that's not a good thing. And, and Brittany and I are not criminal attorneys. We're estate planning and elder law attorneys. But we're worried right. about how this affects people, period. Um, you know, there's other issues. Um, you know, healthcare as experts, right? I mean, I, I'm tired of hearing the word expert right now because I can find you an expert on anything from any position I want to push my agenda. Yeah, so I mean. When I say expert, I basically mean someone I found who you might consider an expert that I'm going to prop up in front of you to convince you that my point of view is correct. Yeah. And and you have a, um, you know, sort of a unique context uh, for that idea because of what you, you used to do and who we are as attorneys. I mean, as attorneys, we go to trial. Lots what do we do to find an expert yeah. that's going to support our case, right? Yeah. And right. I mean, a trial. Well, trust the, me, there uh, are experts for hire out there for any point of view you okay. want. And, and oh yeah, trust me. And, and and but at least at trial, the other side gets the question, the expert on their credentials and on their opinion. Right. And um, you know, we're not even getting to do that right now. And so you know, we're propping up people, putting them on the news, and these are quote unquote experts. And a lot of them are medical professionals. And I can see how they could have you know certain views and trust me, I'm not a doctor or a medical professional, but I mean, many of these people who they prop up as experts aren't necessarily, you know, virologists, right? I mean, and you, you know, there's, I think even if you got one, you can even get one to say what you, what you want them to say. Well, there, are. There, there are virologists on both sides of this issue. Yeah. One would tell you it's 10 times more deadly than, than the flu. Another would tell you the flu is 10 times more deadly than it. Right. I've seen both. Right. So, you know, you, you can get your expert to fit your particular particular agenda. So just know that when you're watching the news, you should know that. It depends on what channel you're watching as to what agenda they're pushing as to what their experts are going to say. Right. And the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it usually is. <laughs> so look for the truth. And that's what we're talking about today is, is there somewhere in the middle between shutting down an entire economy and also, you know, maybe perhaps allowing us to still be Americans, to still be human beings, to have our inalienable rights. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and also protecting the vulnerable. That's right. I mean, we had an extreme reaction to a very dangerous virus. So, right. but was that reaction too overreaching? Was it too extreme? Can we back off of it where we could still protect people and, and you know, ensure fundamental rights? And, and another thing is, is that, you know, people die of other things other than just the virus, you know? And um, poverty, unemployment, economic strife, that kills people just as efficiently as a, the coronavirus, or yeah, and, even more so. It may it may take longer. Yeah, and in horrible ways, it has devastating effects on families. 
crime. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, it, the ripple effect of, of having a, an economy just grind to a halt is devastating. 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 And we don't even know what the full effects would be unless we're prepared to be a communist country. Yeah. Unless that's what we're saying. Because that's where we're at right now. We've right. taken away all individual liberties and freedoms. We've trashed the Constitution. We've put that one in the closet. Although I would say we've probably done that a long time ago. And and we've uh, and we've shut down the economy and now the government's sending you checks. Yeah. Communism, baby. Yeah. And gets to determine whether or not you, you qualify for that. By the way, if you owe the government, do you get the money? No. There you go. No, you don't. Seems pretty unfair. If you owe the government, then you don't. Don't. I mean, if you're saying that you need twelve hundred dollars or whatever it is to live off of, because as an individual, and that's what we're going to do for you as the government. Oh, but if you owe the government, that's grounds for us not to give you enough money to live off of. That's crazy. Here's a question: Is the government incentivizing people not to work right now? Oh, I mean, certainly. If you're going to shut down all but not but essential businesses and then you know pay them I would argue that all business is essential oh i would argue that too and i and i feel like um the guy you know who who owns a small business and is sitting at home now not how many are they or how how are they? His, uh, his mortgage payment we'll talk about how they're there. essential yeah how but, offended is the is the small business person or any business any business out there you know right now how offended are they hearing other people brag or talk about their essential jobs and the crap right. day at work they had today or whatever, you know, the hard yeah. job they had today. I, I think and, people, and yeah. people are protesting right now. People are protesting right now, protesting their governments, not to get free money, not to get, you know, not to get a free ride, but for the yeah. right to go to work. Right. They're exercising their first amendment right. And upside down right now. Right, they're ex ex exercising their First Amendment right to protest, to go back to work, which is which is also a right that they have. And I mean, how, how's that how's that going for them right now? Uh, well, they got arrested. Yeah, they got dispersed by the police power and arrested for exercising yeah. their First Amendment constitutional right. I see a lawsuit. I think they're going to get paid. Yeah, I mean, were they were in a designated public forum. That they, they, they just were simply exercising. Oh, but they don't have a permit, Brent. They didn't, they, you know, it's a, they don't need a permit. You don't need a permit to exercise your First Amendment right, freedom of speech, right. to be able to protest. I mean, that's. You don't, need, you don't need papers to to just be out in the world. You remember the Boston Massacre? I do. Well, I wasn't there, but I remember learning about it. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the protesters started throwing rocks and stuff and getting a little rowdy with the British yeah. soldiers. So the British soldiers shot him. Yep. Do you know who represented the British soldiers in the trial? John, John Adams. John Adams. That's right. A true patriot, no doubt. That's right. Right. And attorney, great attorney. So, you know, John Adams represented those soldiers and they, and they deserved representation because John Adams believed in everybody having a fair representation, right? Yeah. And a free country and freedom from tyranny. Even though those British soldiers, what they did was they essentially dispersed the protesters by force. Right. And I'm waiting for something like that to happen here. That's where, see, see, history can tell us, Brenton, everything that we're getting ready to go through. Absolutely. I already know where we're going to go with this. I don't have to guess because I could look at every French Revolution. I could look at that the American revolution, and there's been multiple French revolutions, by the way, if you want to go back and look at the French revolutions. And those were horrible, by the way, horrible conditions, living conditions for the people, revolutions. I mean, just horrible stuff happened. Um, if people are not given their freedom to speak, do not discuss these things, do not talk about their fears, and are not given a right or an avenue for redress for their grievances, it will come to violence and I do not want, it will come to, it will express itself in unproductive ways, or maybe some would say productive ways. 
but it's going to be expressed one way or the other. And I don't want it to come to that for anybody. So right. that's important for us to be able to discuss these things and talk them through and to not shut down free liberties and speech and protest and those things. Right. I mean, if, if people just literally cannot express their opinion or have the ability to, to try to address issues face to face with the people making the decisions, then that always will result in some type of violence. If, Never if, you're, the decision maker, if you're the decision maker, you just get to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, freedom of speech is 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 a right that is beneficial to not only the people who have that freedom, but the government itself. Because if you sh if the government shuts down free speech, the result is that that government is not going to be around much longer, especially no. especially in a country who has enjoyed that freedom for a long time. I don't know the Chinese. I remember when I was younger. The Chinese running over a bunch of students and protesters in Tiananmen Square with tanks and shooting yeah. them, and uh, yeah. and and they're still their government's still around. Although, That's true. Although but, although there's a lot of protests going on in Hong Kong and other places, mm -hmm. there's certainly an upheaval in that country too. But so that they, country has not had the taste of freedom like you know America has. I mean, once you have yeah. it, you take it away. Yeah. And that, I mean, most westernized countries have had that, have valued freedom of speech. Um, well, you can't take it away unless the people are so fearful. That's right. So fearful, they're willing to give it up themselves. That's right. That, that is true. We've but I think there's enough. Precedent that, and, and the precedent we've set right now. That's right. And I think there's enough people, though, right now that are just looking at the situation and they don't really know how to express it. Um, I think that a lot of people have fear of from getting sick, but I think a lot of people have more fear of what is going to happen on the other side of this thing. You know, I'm going to tell you something, and it's going to sound bad, probably. To some people. I would rather get this virus right now than have my children live in a country where they're oppressed. Yeah. I mean, that's, just like, that's just like saying I would go to war for my country, you know. I, I mean, would go to war for my country. I have been in the military where I signed saying that I would go to war and fight and die for my country. If that's yeah. necessary. Right? Yeah. And that's how important it is to me. Yeah. I mean, if it means preserving our the constitution and all our fundamental rights, absolutely. Human rights. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, when you give ultimate government control, I hate to seem ominous, but in the light in the 20th century, around 100 million people died under communist rule, mm -hmm. under this type of rule where, where um, the government has total and utter control and the people don't have the right to free enterprise and redress. That, that's not good numbers for communism and socialism in any way. So right. that scares me. Um, that scares me very much. So, and, and I'm talking about between Russia and China, right? Between yeah. Mao and Stalin. So, yeah, doesn't even count the wars that was that have been fought over oppression and tyranny. War, World War One and Two. Yeah, and 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 then you know, I mean, Vietnam, Korea. I mean, all that was was, you know, us trying to prevent the spread of communism because of communism spreads, then you have other governments that are same as Soviet, USSR, Russia, and, you know, China. What's the difference between us and China right now, or Russia? There's not much. There's I mean, not? There's not much. I mean, can you, can, you, can you go and protest right now without getting arrested? I mean, you can't go protest without getting arrested? I mean, you know, your neighbors, are gonna, your neighbors, you watch. What comes next is your neighbors start ratting you out. That's what comes next is, is we turn on each other. The neighbors start ratting you out and, uh, and that's where we're at. Yeah. It's your George or Orwell right there. And, and you're, and you're given, uh, I think this is worse than anything Orwell contemplated. Yeah. And then I you, think, I mean, Patriot Act was, was squarely within what <laughs> Orwell contemplated, but sure. I don't think he contemplated what we're doing right now. No Just total suspension of rights. And, and the thing is, I think in a lot of people's mind, they could, they could be thinking to themselves, well, Ren, well, Greg, you know, this is only temporary. 
I okay. Don't know that. And I that's okay. Yesterday, that argued that a medical expert argued, a scientist argued that we should shut it down in 2022. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. What then? What then? Have we all become yeah. used to it by then? Where are we at then? Exactly. It seems pretty indefinite right now. And even if it is tem temporary, you know, I mean, has has our country, has our constitution, has our um, our case law allowed traditionally infringement of rights? But but it's okay because it's it's temporary. What about a temporary search, even though it's unlawful? What about temporary slavery? No, none of those things are good or lawful or should happen or will happen in this country. I think the difference is I think that there would be a huge uprising. That's what I fear. I fear the, the you know, Boston Tea Party-ish type thing starting to happen, right? Yeah. And I don't want that to happen. So um, what about the, the you know, healthcare experts or people that would say, listen to experts. This is not about the economy, Britain. This is not about money. In fact, if if you're talking about money right now, you shouldn't be making any, any decisions and you really should have nothing to say. This is about listening to the experts. Listen to the experts. This is about listening to the experts. I've heard that a million times. This yeah. is about listening to the experts. Stay at home. Hashtag stay at home. And I'm sure about, people will sit and listen to the experts while they and their family starve to death. I don't want to starve to death. How could we start to death though? There's so much food out there. How could how could there be food shortage? Shortage. Yeah, man. I mean, you shut down an economy. We're uh, economy. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. The sheer amount of logistics to move fo food from one place to the other to stock shelves. You know, I mean, it, it's a big deal. And are there the food shortages right now in the grocery store? There are, man. There are. Is Somebody it? Because of, I don't. I don't think it's because of hoarding either. No. But I go and there's no eggs. Yeah. And I'm not sure why that is. But there's already starting to be shortages. Yeah. And and and, and, and food production too. I mean, it might be considered an essential business, but the logistical tr train of or chain of of food production is not just one guy making a bunch of money because people need food and they're giving it to them. You have you have farmers, okay. You have manufacturers. You have, you know, all these, all, all these individuals in the chain of production, and they are harmed by an economic crisis, even if they have a product that's in high demand. What about doctors? What about doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals? All you hear from doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals, and from their perspective, I understand why is stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. We don't want to overload the system, stay at home, right? That's all you hear. But how do doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals and hospitals run, Brent? Do they run on happy and joy, or do people get paid money? It's a business, man, just like anything else. And how long can this system sustain itself before those people don't get paid any money or get laid off or fired? That's one of my fears is, you know, if, if like that article said, if we're continuing... They have to understand what they're saying and how they yeah. affect, it affects them long term. Yeah. And my my concern would be is if we have to shut the economy down for a long period of time and continue like we are right now for a long period of time, how are we going to have the medical supplies and infrastructure necessary to take care of the people who need it? Not only from that was built, that was built by, by running capitalist economy and machine that exactly. built Exactly. I mean, unless unless we have a socialist redistribution of wealth to those places, which that's all well and good, but you're taking that money from somewhere. If you're taking that money from somewhere. You're taking it from someone. So, and so if about, your money. So there then, there may be people in this country who want that right now, and that's my fear that that's part of the agenda and that's part of the plan. Right. Um, but it's. Scary thing about what about teachers? What about teachers out there? Love our teachers, but yeah. I'm telling you, man, you know, I'm sure they're scared to go back to school. Hey, man, I've got six kids and they transfer the flu and everything else around among each other, you know, at school. You know, the, the kids do, the teachers are vulnerable there. 
How do teachers get paid? Tax dollars, man. Tax dollars. Where do tax dollars come from? Individuals. And those individuals get paid. Businesses. Individuals and businesses that we're telling they can't run right now. That's right. That's where it comes from. So all the teachers sitting at home need to think about who pays their salaries. Okay. Right. All right. So there's a lot of things going on and at play right now. Our concern is the freedom of speech issue, the religious issues, the constitutional issues that have been taken away. You know, our question is, is there a reasonable way to put the economy and the country back together to get back out there like we were, but also in a way that's contemplative of people who are vulnerable, seniors, people who are sick, people who have the virus, people who think they might have the virus. You know, how can we get back out there and take care of everyone so we can keep the entire engine and machine of our economy, healthcare, and education system going so that we can all continue to function as Americans? Um, you know, I saw someone post something yesterday on a social media channel that said, I hope people don't favor retail over healthcare and this virus. But I would point out to that person that, you know, if you're a teacher, uh, retail pays your salary and those businesses pay your salary and take care of your family and give you the ability to teach and to take care of people and, and to, to teach students. So, so we need to think about those things, be contemplative about those things. If you're a senior out there, one of our clients out there, you know, I would advise you to stay safe. I'm not a doctor, but certainly uh, stay safe and do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself and take precautions. We want to see you safe. We want to see your estates protected uh, because, you know, if we totally revolutionize our country and, you know, I don't know what your estate might look like. I don't know what that might mean. So, you know, those are the, the things that we're concerned about at McIntyre Elder Law is your estate, your health, and our rights and freedoms. So thank you for watching. And we'll be back with important content um, and new developments as they happen in the world. So thank you. Tune in regularly on our Facebook channel and on our website, mcelderlaw.com. Sign up for our e-newsletter and you'll receive our e-newsletter by email, which will contain great content like this. Thanks. Have a great day.